Hello everyone, welcome back if you're returning, welcome if you're new, my name is Ricky Fraley and uh, on this channel we like to stare into the void, hope that it doesn't stare into us too much as uh, we talk about true crime. Um, this week's video is on a man by the name of Fitoshi Matsunaga. He was a, or is, I guess he's still alive right now, just in prison. He is a Japanese serial killer. Um, I would lean more towards saying he was a potential cult leader because of the things that he did, but they gave him the name the Mind Control Killer, and you'll see why in just a second. But before I get into that, I'd like to uh, once again remind you guys that down below in the description will be a link to my Twitter um, and a link to my Patreon. On Twitter, uh, we can all talk together and, you know, it'll be the best way to communicate, really, uh, with me and everybody else who follows. And on my Patreon, if you join and are part of the Inner Circle, then a part of the proceeds will go to Thorn, which is a nonprofit dedicated to fighting trafficking in children. Um, I've got plenty, or I've got more information over on my Patreon, so if you swing by and decide to join, that's great. We can, uh, we can all talk together there and potentially help save some, uh, some children from that kind of life. But obviously the rest of the proceeds go towards helping grow the channel and helping me continue what I do so we can keep supporting Thorn and other nonprofits like them. But getting into the case here, Fatoshi Matsunaga was born on April 28, 1961 in this place in the city of Kitakyushu in Fukuoka Prefecture in Japan, but he grew up in Yanagawa. His father was the owner of a uh, tatami uh, shop, where, and they were part of a wealthy family together. Both his mother and grandmother were very fond of Fatoshi and therefore doted over him as a child. He also did very well in school, achieving top marks in um, all of his grades, but um, the, he did have behavioral problems. He had a habit of lying or misrepresenting facts to his peers and teachers, and therefore uh, they stopped trusting him necessarily. It was in high school that Fotoshi would meet a future wife in Junko Ogata. However, his time at this high school with Junko was cut short as he had to transfer to an all-boys school um, when it was revealed that he was living with and having relations with a junior high school girl. That was a big no-no, so they transferred him to a boys' school for the rest of his high school career. Once Futoshi uh, graduated high school, however, he got married at the age of 19, and him and his wife would go on to have a son. By all accounts, Futoshi did seem normal, like a regular man with a wife and a son, and a successful business. However, he was living multiple lives beneath the surface. He often told people that he was a graduate of Tokyo University, and a novelist and lecturer from Kyoto University, which were two of, or which are, two of the most um, elite schools in the country of Japan. During the course of his marriage, uh, he's believed to have had up to 10 different mistresses, and he would use marriage scams to extort money from his mistresses or otherwise unsuspecting women. In October of 1982, he would um, become involved with Junko Ogata, that, um, that female that he met in high school. On Christmas Eve of that same year, while his wife was pregnant with their son, uh, Futoshi would hold a party in which he invited all of his alleged mistresses, including Junko. While his wife was aware of his, uh, his cheating and his affairs and desired to get away from him, uh, she was unable to leave the relationship due to her pregnancy. Junko and Futoshi would grow closer um, in the intervening time and Futoshi would begin to assault both his wife and Junko at the same time. While his wife would uh, become angry and fight back, Junko would be more submissive and she accepted the abuse. His now ex-wife recalls an incident in which Futoshi had been assaulting Junko and told her to lick uh, a pool of mayonnaise up off of the floor. Uh, his wife objected and told him to stop due to the presence of her child who had been born uh, by this point, but Junko bent down and proceeded to lick the mayonnaise up off of the floor as she had been told to by uh, uh, Futoshi. Eventually, uh, his wife would not be able to stand the incidents of abuse uh, as they were becoming more frequent, and she eventually ran away and filed a police report. 
Utoshi would search for her and try to find her, but he couldn't, so eventually he filed for divorce, and the divorce was finalized several months later. After Futoshi was caught, his ex-wife would tell reporters, and I quote, if I, haven't es if I hadn't escaped him, my family would have been murdered like Junko's was. I feel so sorry for Junko. So, there is a little bit of information on the tatami shop that his father ran, that Futoshi eventually did take over. Uh, he took over the shop and converted to selling Japanese futons instead of tatamis. He would name this new business World in 1983. Two years later, in 1985, Futoshi would purchase a building to operate the business out of. Futoshi would build a, a soundproof room on the third floor of the building that his business was running out of. And it's believed that he used this room in order to torture his own employees through electrical shocks. He would allegedly shout at his superstitious male employees about spirits haunting them and being behind them constantly while they were in the shop. And he would often make references to religious terms like samsara and uh, kami. Employees would later recall that they were abused if they failed to follow Fatoshi's orders and that they were encouraged to abuse or torture other employees and to conduct several fraudulent business transactions and unlawful business practices. They were ordered to do all of this by Futoshi in order to um, defraud customers and clients of money and just to satiate his sick desire for torturing people, I guess. By the year of 1992, so remember he took over uh, the shop in 1983, so nine years later, by 1992, Fitoshi had stolen a total amount of 180 million yen, which was about 2.2 million U.S. dollars, um, through fraud and blackmail. And he and Junko would ultimately shut, would have to shut the business down as they had managed to land themselves on Japan's most wanted list for all of this um, fraud and blackmail. After they closed the shop down, they went into hiding and moved to Ishikawa. So you can see this dude's just shaping up to be, you know, pretty much the model citizen. But... What of the relationship between Junko and Futoshi? See, Futoshi promised to marry Junko back in 1984. However, Junko's mother, her name was Shizumi Ogata, disapproved of the relationship because uh, she had knowledge of the constant abuse that um, Junko was suffering at the hands of Futoshi. This would lead to Futoshi showing up at Junko's parents' house and um, when Shizumi entered the door, he forced himself inside the house and would force himself upon Shizumi, Junko's mother. Um, he sexually assaulted her. Junko would attempt to commit suicide the following year in 1985, but Futoshi would use her failed suicide attempt to convince Junko that her family hated her, and thereby she convinced her to live with him and disregard her own family. Under fake names, Fatoshi continued meeting with women, and sometimes he used his wife, by this point, Junko, and their son, who was born in 1993, to trick other women into marriage with him. He would tell these women that were interested in finding a marriage partner that Junko was his sister and that their son was actually his nephew. He would then successfully extort money from these women. Just a great guy we got here, Mr. Fatoshi Matsunaga. So, in April of 1993, Futoshi convinced a married woman who had three children to leave her husband and run away with him. She took her children with her. One of the children, however, would die under mysterious circumstances in September of that year, 1993. As a result, the remaining two children were sent to live with their father and grandfather, leaving just the unnamed woman, Junko, and Futoshi. During this relationship, Futoshi eventually would defraud the woman of nearly 12 million yen, which was the equivalent of $145,000, give or take, uh, U.S. dollars. She would then also die under mysterious circumstances in March of the following year, 1994. Police at the time, however, were unable to prove that Futoshi was responsible for either of the deaths. That very same year, 1994, Futoshi and Junko would target a real estate agent named Kumio. Kumio had a daughter, and as such, she was also roped into their plan. They befriended Kumio, only to lure him to their apartment and get him drunk. At which point, they found out about his criminal past 
and use that as blackmail in order to force him and his daughter to come live with them in their apartment. It's at this apartment that Kumio was tortured with electric shocks and he and his daughter were forced to consume their own feces if they had any accidents or if they needed to defecate more than once a day. They were only allowed to once per day. They were also forced to live under inhumane conditions. Kumio was forced to stand until his feet were swollen, and the pair were not allowed to sleep for more than three to four hours per day. Kumio held on, but ultimately, under these conditions, he would perish after two years of torture and abuse in the year 1996 at the age of 34. Kumio was an absolute trooper. Futoshi, however, would go on to convince Kumio's daughter that she was responsible for her father's death and ordered her to write a letter stating that it was her fault and then forced Kumio's daughter and Junko to cut up, boil, and dispose of the body of Kumio. He told them to dispose of the body parts by throwing them into the ocean from a ferry. On the same day that they did this, Junko went into labor and gave birth to Junko and Futoshi's second son. Futoshi would soon after convince another woman that he had graduated from Kyoto University and promised to marry her. He managed to defraud her as well of 5.6 million yen, which was around about 69,000 US dollars, and then confined both her and her daughter to their apartment. The woman would escape by jumping from the second floor in March of 1997 and subsequently was put into the care of a mental hospital, and her daughter was later released by Futoshi. The following month, uh, Futoshi became desperate for money and would send Junko to her parents' house in order to try to procure a, a loan from her parents, or from her mother and her sister, rather. When Junko was not able to get any loans, she left both of her sons with her mother and then ran away to Oita Prefecture to work at a hostess club. When Futoshi was unable to find her, he contacted her family, threatening them, and then uh, blackmailing Shizumi over the 1985 forced sexual encounter. He then concocted a plan to fake his own death. He got three acquaintances who knew Junko to pretend that Futoshi had committed suicide and to tell her about his funeral. Once Junko showed up for his funeral, for some reason I know that I would never have been caught going to that man's funeral, especially after the things that he did to her and her family up to this point already. But after she showed up for his funeral, um, he captured her and punished her for her escape, bringing her back to his apartment and deciding to, and he, he decided to punish her family as well for aiding and abetting her escape from him. Now, there's going to be a couple names coming up here, but these are all names of Junko's family. Once he returned home with Junko, uh, he invited Junko's father, a man by the name of Takashiga Ogata, her mother, Shizumi, and her sister, Rieko Ogata, to his apartment at night and then got them all drunk. See, Futoshi would use this as a means to divide the family by getting them to divulge any secrets they were keeping and then argue with one another or by blackmailing them into sending him large sums of money in order for not divorcing Junko and reporting her crimes to the authorities. Once the family was broke and therefore could no longer afford to provide large sums of money, um, he would begin to torture and abuse them as well. Takashige was forced to replace the pipes where Kumio's murder had taken place, which therefore made him liable for the destruction of evidence um, if he were to call the police on Futoshi for anything. In addition to this abuse, Futoshi was having these quote, heavy quotations, um, sexual relations with both Rieko and Shizumi, that's uh, mm, uh, Junko's mother and sister, uh, Shizumi and Rieko. And this made Junko upset, rightfully so, that's her mom and her sister, obviously. Um, and this prompted her to confront uh, him. However, he would deny this always to Junko. Rieko was still married to her husband, Kazuya Ogata and during these re relations. And as a result, Futoshi began attempting to drive a wedge between her and her husband and her sister Junko. Futoshi began inviting Kazuya over for his nightly drunken family meetups, 
and it is here where he began disclosing to his brother-in-law all of Rieko's past indiscretions. Heavy quotations. Um, and he began to slowly turn him against Rieko, eventually convincing him to hate her and her parents. Soon, he encouraged them to start beating them. In turn, Fotoshi convinced Rieko to start divorce proceedings against her husband for the beating. So you can see how he's insidiously working his way into the mind of all these people through torture and manipulation tactics and getting them to do exactly what he wants them to do. That's why he was called the, um, the mind control killer. It's because he was just so good at manipulating the people around him that it was like he had the power of mind control. He forced the brother-in-law, Kazuya, to replace the tiles in the bathroom that Kumio had died in and told him that he would also be caught for destroying evidence in the event that he went to the police. Fatoshi would then convince his brother-in-law to start bringing the couple's children into the home as well. This would put all six of Junko's immediate family under the same roof with this monster. The parents stopped going to work, and the kids were absent from school all the time. They were all going to Fatoshi's apartment. They all started suffering from mental and physical illnesses, and they took out as many loans as they could in order to give to Fatoshi. But eventually they could no longer afford rent on their own homes and had to live with him permanently. Once their money started to dry up, it was time to start lightening the load that was in his home. At this point, Fatoshi had been able to sponge 63 million yen, about 630,000 US dollars, from these family members. On December 1st, 1997, Fatoshi coerced Junko into shocking her 61-year-old father, Takashige, to death. The entire family was responsible for dismembering and disposing of the body of their former patriarch. They would disassemble and flush the body parts in public toilets and throw them into rivers. Just a month after Takashige died, Futoshi got Junko and Rieko, so Junko and her sister, to hold down their own mother, Shizumi. She had been going into spasms from the electrical shock torture, and her mental state had begun to severely deteriorate. So, Kazuya strangled her with an electrical cord while her two daughters held her down. They would also dismember her corpse and get rid of them the same way that they had done all the others. The next month in February of 1998, Futoshi commanded Junko to do something about her sister Rieko, who had gone deaf from the electric shocks and repeated torture. Rather than having Rieko suffer even more torture and electric shocks, they decided to end her life. Junko's niece, Aya Ogata, held down her mother's legs, while Rieko's own husband, Kazuya, strangled his wife to death with an electrical cord. Shortly after this, Futoshi and Junko would confine Kazuya to a bathroom. He would soon become sick as a result of the torture and electrical shocks. And on April 13th, 1998, Kazuya drank a can of beer given to him by Futoshi and some anti-drowsiness medication and died an hour later from apparent starvation. Aya, who remembers Junko's niece and therefore the daughter of Rieko and Kazuya, was the one to find Kazuya, her father's, body in the bathroom. And the surviving members of the family went about dismembering and disposing of the remains. This now meant that Junko and Fatoshi were the only adults left, as both Junko's mother and father had died, and her sister and brother-in-law had just perished as well. Fatoshi mentioned Junko's nephew, Yuki Ogata, being a loose end to Junko. Aya and Junko, feeling Yuki would suffer much more through torture, decided to end his life. With the help of Kumio's daughter, who has been here the entire time, um, in May of 1998, the three females instructed Yuki to lie down on the kitchen floor. Uh, Aya told him, I'll take you to go meet mom now, referring to Rieko, their shared mother, and Junko's sister, as Junko strangled him to death. I believe he was only five years old. The, together, they dismembered and disposed of the body of the child. Fatoshi was now focused on Aya. Kumio's daughter recalled him saying that Aya was a loose end, and that with her gone there would be one less mouth to feed in the house. On June 7, 1998, Fatoshi talked to Aya in the bathroom, and told Kumio's daughter and Junko that she said she wanted to die. The two women approached Aya 
as she lifted her neck, making it easier to strangle her. Kumio's daughter would ultimately be the one to strangle her. She was also dismembered and disposed of. Looking for a new way now to make money once all six of Junko's family had been murdered, in July of 2000, Futoshi would convince a woman to get a divorce from her husband and to marry him instead. He forced her to put her twin children in his care, while requiring her to pay child support for them in August of 2001. They would convince her to give him a total of 20 million yen, which was the equivalent of 246 and a half thousand US dollars. Now for the beginning of the end for this absolute monster of a person. Kumio's daughter, who was now a teenager, had been living with Futoshi and Junko, and had been tortured, asked to torture, and was responsible for, caring, uh, for taking care of both Futoshi's kids, as well as the twins who were now living with them. Feeling like she might be the next one to be killed, and I mean, I can't say I blame her, um, she managed to escape on January 30th of 2002. She would run away to her grandparents' home and tell them that she was on a business trip. They weren't aware of her confinement and weren't even aware that her father had been killed. Futoshi, however, uh, was still seeing many women, including Kumio's sister, so Kumio's daughter's aunt, obviously, who gave him enough information to find her and bring her back on February 15th, just two weeks after she got away. However, before she was taken back, she left a note for her grandparents pleading for help. As a result, he would punish her with being strangled, electrocuted, and she had her fingernails and some of her toenails pulled out using needle nose pliers as, as a punishment. The grandparents would contact the authorities and a photo was found with the daughter holding her own father's heart. On March 6th, so about three weeks after um, she was captured again, the girl would escape once more and report the crimes to the authorities. The police would arrest both Futoshi and Junko the ne very next day. Kumio's daughter's confession started a murder investigation, and the police took custody of Futoshi's two sons and the twins that they had acquired. When police entered Futoshi's home, they found loads of pornographic photos and videos that he had taken. The pair were charged with Aya's murder on September 18, 2002. Takashige's murder on October 12, 2002. Shizumi's murder on December 6, 2002. Yuki's murder on January 11, 2003. Kumio, Kumio's murder on February 3, 2003. Rieko's murder on February 25, 2003. And Kazuya's murder on May 30, 2003. There were, however, no charges ever brought against Kumio's daughter. The trial for the couple began in May of 2003 at, at the Fukuoka District Court. No physical evidence of the crimes was ever found, so police investigators used both Junko's testimony and Kumio's testimony, pictures, and other evidence found in the apartments, as well as statements from neighbors uh, complaining about putrid smells, which were likely from the rotting corpses that were come, that were inside the apartment. Futoshi, however, continued to plead innocent, claiming that he only abused the victims because he did not like their attitude and didn't intend to kill them because they were his quote-unquote money trees. He insisted that Ogata committed the murders on her own. The prosecutors, however, were unmoved, thankfully, by Futoshi, that charm's not going to help you here, man, and asked for the death penalty for both Futoshi Matsunaga and Junko Ogata. On September 28, 2005, the court sentenced the couple to be executed by hanging. They were found guilty of six murders, but not for killing Kumio, as he had been injured by electrocution, which later resulted in his death, instead of a direct act of, act of a homicide, I guess. I, I feel like that would still be homicide, but they weren't charged for his death. Only, I guess, torture. They appealed the decision to the Fukuoka High Court, and in September 2007, Junko's death sentence was lowered to life in prison. This was largely due to the domestic violence and torture she suffered at the hands of Futoshi, and for her showing remorse for her crimes. Futoshi's death sentence was upheld, and he would appeal the decision once again, and the case was brought to the Supreme Court of Japan. His defense argued that he wasn't involved in the crimes, 
directly, and so should not get the death penalty. However, the prosecution felt he abused, assaulted, and coerced those around him to commit the crimes so that he wouldn't get his hands dirty. They also said he wasn't remorseful for anything, never apologized for any of the crimes, and that the punishment was justified. In December of 2011, the Supreme Court upheld the death sentence, and the sentence was finalized. He is still currently on death row in the Fukuoka Detention Center, awaiting his execution. So, if you really wanted to, I was going to say you could go visit him, but why would you want to do that? And also, I don't know if they allow visitation for people on death row in Japan. I don't even know if they allow it here in the U.S. for the places that still have the death penalty. But yeah, he's still alive. He's in prison on death row waiting for his sentence to be carried out. The twin children, however, uh, that he had coerced away from their mother were returned to their mother. Um, and Futoshi and Junko's two boys were enrolled in elementary school and lived at a child welfare institution. Kumio's daughter was sent to an orphanage, but upon becoming an adult, she got married and lived with her husband and her two children. I'm so happy that she, as far as I could tell, as far as I could find, she, um, she turned out all right. I mean, as, as, as good as you can after something like this. Seems like she's living a happy life, as happy as you can be after living with someone like this. Being, well, being held in captivity by someone like this. In July 2003, a farewell ceremony for the six deceased members of the Ogata family was held with photographs and an empty urn as there were no remains that were ever found. Uh, so that uh, was the case of the Japanese mind control killer. You can see where they got the name from. He definitely seemed like he was able to control the minds of those around him, but we know that he was just a con man, probably pretty charismatic though, and um, he would have been a hell of a cult leader. I, I, I'm not saying that in a good way or an admiring way, but he had that way about him. He knew how to manipulate people, so he was able to get them to do what he wanted, especially Junko. He had her under a spell, a tight spell. So um, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, joining me to stare into the void this week. I'll be back again next week with another video. Um, hit up my Twitter, follow me, say hey, say what's up. Go to Patreon if you want to support me and support Thorn, fighting against trafficking in children. Um, I do want to say thank you to my patrons, and I do want to say stay safe to all of you. Um, I love you, all of you, and I'll see you all next week to stare into the void some more. See ya.